Today in our 2016 Kia Sorento, we'll be installing the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, part number C56256. Okay, here's what our wiring looks like installed. As you can see, we have an adequate amount of length to easily hook up to our trailer. We even have some more zip tied up behind the bumper if we would like to have a longer amount. This will give us all of our functions we need to legally tow our trailer. We'll have our turn signals, our brake lights, and our tail lights and running lights. There's no modification the vehicle required at all, no cutting, no splicing, plugs right into place, and it'll get you down the road quickly. Has a nice included dust cover here that you can also use when you're not towing your trailer. Protects your wiring here. But additionally, you can use it as a way to secure your wiring up to your hitch on the safety chain loop so it doesn't drag down the ground and it's readily accessible when you hook up to your trailer. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our Kurt wiring harness, we'll show you how to get it installed on our Kia Sorento. All right, the first thing we need to do for our install is to gain access to the nuts that hold our taillight assemblies in place. We'll find a cover behind each of our taillights on the inside of our hatch area. Let's pop it open. Where we'll find two 10 millimeter nuts and we'll remove those. Okay, now we'll grab our tail light assembly and work it off the vehicle. Now, there's one electrical connector that goes to our tail light assembly. We'll push it on the tab and pull back to separate it. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. Okay, now we'll take our four pole flat end and we'll drop it down behind our bumper cover here on the driver's side. Feed it down through. Do the same with the module box. We have both of our connectors here sticking out. We'll drop down the one that has the green wire, leaving the one with the yellow wire exposed. Okay, now on our driver's side, we'll plug in the male end to the female end of the vehicle. Once it clips in place, we'll pull back, make sure it's secure. And now we can plug our taillight assembly back into place for the driver's side. Okay, that's secure. Now we'll reinstall the taillight assembly. All right, on our driver's side, underneath we have this plastic panel. There are six fasteners that hold it in place. There are push pin fasteners, there's one here, there, 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 and one more here on the back side. So we'll pop this out, pull it out, we'll do the same for the other five. Now we'll just grab the panel. There's some push fasteners there that just grab on those studs. Just pull down and it'll come out. All right, right here there's a bolt that goes into the vehicle's body. We're gonna remove this bolt on the back side so we can attach our ground wire here to. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. So we just use a ratchet, come in from behind. Okay, with our bolt removed, we'll slide our ground wire over it and reinstall it. Now we'll take our double-sided tape here, peel off one end, Stick it to the back of our module, press it down firmly. We'll peel off the other end. And we will apply it to the underside of our vehicle right here. And we'll press it firmly. Okay, now we have our black wire coming off our module. This is our power wire that will connect to our black wire that we're gonna to lead to the vehicle's battery in the front. So what we'll do is we'll just twist this nice and together here, put on our yellow butt connector, and we'll crimp it down into place. We'll strip off some of the insulation from our wire running the front, place it in the other end of the butt connector and crimp it down as well. 
Okay, now for some extra protection, we'll make sure we wrap up our butt connector here with some electrical tape, just to help keep the elements from damaging our electrical connection. All right, we went ahead and zip tied up our wiring here a little bit. Our four pole flat had some slack in it, and so did our connector for the driver's side. We just went to this factory wiring harness here. All right, our four pole flat and our connector for the passenger side, we went behind our rear fascia here, the support tabs that help hold it in place. We went out halfway with our four pole flat, just leaving us enough to connect with. Our connector for the passenger side continued on over, went above our exhaust here, and it's just heading right here for right now until we bring it up behind our tail light assembly into the vehicle to make our connection. All right, our dust cover here for a full pole flat. We'll just slide it on position. Go around through our safety chain loop here on our hitch. Clip it in place. All right, now we'll take something to stick down behind our bumper cover here. We're using a piece of airline tubing. You could use a coat hanger or a thicker piece of wire. Just push it on down. Okay, we taped our connector here to our pull wire that we dropped down. We'll just pull this on up behind our tail light now. And we'll move the pull wire. We'll plug in the male end to the female end. Make sure it clips in and it's connected. And we'll plug our tail light back in now. Okay, we had a little extra slack here in our green wire, so we zip tied it up to the harness itself. Just cut that off there. And we'll push this back in place. So our power wire here, we have zip tied up this wiring harness, and we started to route it above our rear subframe here, making sure we avoided any moving parts. Okay, with it routed here now, we can reinstall our cover in the back. So our power wire was above our rear subframe. We continued along, zip tying it up to this parking brake cable here. Went underneath this plastic shield. Where it exits right behind our front subframe, right by the end of the firewall. Now the route we chose with our power wire here, we made sure we were avoiding any moving parts such as the suspension, the axles, anything like that, and any sources of heat such as the exhaust. Drop our pull wire on down. All right, so we'll take our wire and our pull wire again and tape them together. We'll pull it into our engine bay now. Okay, now we need to gain access to the positive terminal side on our battery. That's the one that has a plus sign on it. Pop this cover open here. Take a flathead screwdriver. Come here on the back. Pop loose. Now we have access to a nut. Okay, so on our cap we removed on the side of the right closest to the engine, we made a notch so our wire has a room to pass through it when we slide it back down. So we'll take our wire here, we'll slide it underneath our air box snorkel. We'll cut off some excess, strip off some of the insulation, take a butt connector, and we'll crimp it on down. Take our fuse holder, take off some of the pre-stripped insulation off, and we'll strip off just a little bit more. We'll stick that into the butt connector. We'll crimp that on down. Take off the other insulation there. Strip off a little bit more. Take our provided ring terminal, stick it on, and we'll crimp that on down. Make sure our fuse is out of the fuse holder at this point in time before we make our connections. We'll also want to wrap up this connector with some electrical tape. Now we'll use a 10 millimeter socket to remove this nut here.
place our ring terminal around that stud. Reinstall the nut. Make sure that our ring terminal is facing towards the air box. This way the wire will cleanly pass through and we'll tighten that down. All right, now we'll install our fuse. Push that in there. Close up our dust cover and we'll slide our cover back in place. Okay, with that cover back in place now, you can see we still have the cover for a positive battery terminal able to be used. All right, we have a four pole flat trailer tester here. It's part number I26 on a website if you'd like to purchase one. We'll go ahead and run through the functions to make sure everything's working right. We'll go ahead and turn our headlights on. And as you can see, we'll have a working tail light signal and running light signal on our trailer. Now we'll do a left turn signal. You can see that's working as well. Now we'll do a right. That's working too. Now we'll go ahead and step on the brakes. All right, as you can see, we'll have working brake lights on our trailer here as well too. And that completes our installation of the Curt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56256 on our 2016 Kia Sorento. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.